Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Runar by Ludus Magnus Studios. This is a one to four player game for ages 14 and up, and it roughly takes about 60 to 90 minutes to play. But in the game, there's going to be a campaign mode, there's a solo mode, and then there's also team modes. This game is you're playing as a Jarl and his Viking warriors, and you're thrust in to fight against the Jotun, and you're trying to obtain these runic gems and equipment that have fallen across the land, and you're moving around to try and gather them, scoring points, defeating your enemies, and knocking them out, as well as maybe even uh, fighting up against a nemesis that might pop out as well. There are multiple different campaign modes, and there's like a story section, which I'll be talking about mainly just one, one of our scenarios here, the Fair Massacre. But there is a lot that goes into this game. We're just going to be discussing the basics of how to play the game, and of course the main setup, and then of course I'll go into my review and let you guys decide whether you want to pick this up. The game is currently available and is... Uh, purchasable right now. The campaign is over, but you have your last chance pledge to get the game if you would like. Well, let's go ahead and get into it. Okay, so let's discuss the main setup of the game, and if you want a more thorough description of how to set the game up, you can go ahead and see Becca's video, which is down below from Good Game Society. In this game, Runar, you are going to be gathering a player board, and you are going to be getting a number of warriors. There is a large variety of warriors in this game, and they each going to come with their own unique miniature, a tarot-sized card, which references their strengths, and their defense and their movement, as well as a deck of cards. They each get about 10 cards for their deck. And you're going to select your board, and then you're going to place your strength, instinct, and agility tokens down on the bottom of the board, one of each. On the left-hand side, for the rune trackers, you're going to start with a yellow and a blue uh, token and place them on the zero spaces. Uh, you're also going to get por portions of your building, this little thing that you're going to be building throughout the game, which eventually will be having a little fire on top, and you'll be placing a number of cards and runes underneath them to score to score as you build these things, because you're going to be trying to build this on your side of the board with your building, and they'll score you points as you do so, which is very important to do so in the game. Uh, there's also uh, three characters you're going to be getting. Now, in general, there's a unique way of going about it where there's going to be little tokens that represent spaces on the board because there's a campaign scenarios and I need to explain like how every single one of these games is set up. But uh, you can select your own characters or you can do a bidding type of a situation where you're bidding on the different characters to select from. In general, I just picked three characters. I took their decks, 10 of each, and I shuffled them together and placed them on my space on the game board here. I also have the first player marker, which references that I'm going to be going first. And for each of the guys I selected, I took their character tarot cards and I placed defense tokens on the bottom of their card based on what it said to do. So for instance, Bjorn here has two of them, two little shields here, so I'm going to place down two shield tokens to represent he has his, his defense uh, down there. Um, after I've done that, so I've got my player board, all the cards for my characters all shuffled up, and all my strength, agility, and so on and so forth, instinct tokens are all placed down, and my extra pieces here. Then I'm going to go ahead and look at the board here. Now this board represents the uh, space that which you're going to be fighting at. Each of the sides of the board represents a different pe person's board. You have like the walrus here, and you have the deer here, and the boar, and over there's the, like, the, the cheetah or whatever. And each scenario is going to have their own setup. On the setup, you're going to find traps. You're going to find these runic gems, which are going to be either yellow or blue. And there's going to be these little boxes here. There's going to be spaces that represent little um, areas uh, that you cannot go through, etc., etc. And you'll be placing your characters down as well on their setup locations based on these little tokens you'll be getting. They have a one, two, and a three position. So just follow the rules, basically, and set the things down where they say to set it up. Uh, if you're playing with a nemesis, you're going to be adding this blue board here, representing the three up to three different bad guys you can be facing, as well as a uh, bad guy token to represent the spaces on the map, because as you take your turns, the nemesis will take their turns as well. And then there's this destiny board here, and there's going to be a deck of cards that you're going to be making. Based on the number of players, uh, and, and it's going to determine on your scenario how many event cards you will need for each deck, uh, for each of, uh, of this big deck here. Uh, for four players, you select three of the basic cards that kind of look like this, and you form three separate stacks, stacks of eight, and then you're going to add an event to each of those stacks. You'll shuffle each stack individually, and then you'll create this deck of destiny cards, which means that every three to four cards or so, an action is going to pop up, as opposed to one of these, which just references where you will be placing the new runic stones that fall onto the field. 
I'll also go ahead and set your victory point tokens to zero. Every single player that's playing can place their token on a zero space. The bottom left hand corner is going to represent where the traps and other runic gems are going to go. Uh, after you've done that setup and this setup here, go ahead and place all the rest of the tokens aside. You'll be needing them later. You'll need the defense tokens, you're going to be needing the traps and the stones, victory point tokens, etc, etc. And following of course is victory point tracker there. Uh, as well as all the different Jotun, the bad guys that are going to be spawning throughout the game that you might have to deal with. And then after that, you're pretty much set up for the game Runar. Now, of course, like I said, there are unique scenarios that progress as well. And there's also single play modes. And then there's a 2v2, I believe, and a 2v3, uh, 1v2. So there's like different modes that the Kickstarter unlocked. I haven't looked through thoroughly into them, but I know that there's now new modes that you can go ahead and take a look at on the Kickstarter campaign if you'd like. But mainly that's pretty much it. Your own player area, the main player boards, and then of course the Nemesis and Destiny trackers, and you're ready to go. I'm the first player in the Runar, and I have this little first player marker here, which is going to indicate that I'm going to start. Well, I've shuffled my deck of 30 cards, 10 for each of the different characters that I have, and then I'm going to draw six cards, three, four, five, and six. From there, I'm going to be selecting three of these cards to keep, and three that I'm going to discard. So I'll take these guys here. I'm done. I got these guys that I need. Hingold. Uh, wow, it's all the same character. I didn't shuffle too well. <laughs> Regardless though, these are the cards I'll be starting with. And then I'm going to go through the phases of the game. The phases of the game are tactical, then actions, and then support. And then you're going to follow with destiny, nemesis, and end of turn. And we'll start, and I'll try and explain them in a little bit of detail as we go on. But first, a uh, tactical phase. In this phase, I'm going to be using the cubes that I have in my supply to do certain actions. Uh, things like commanding, fortifying, charging, and building, as well as free actions like equipping items. Um, I'll be spending these cubes to do those certain things. One could be to build on to make this thing bigger. I can charge through from one area of the map to another, etc. Et these are kind of like extra actions that you can do with the remaining tokens in your pool. And you'll be utilizing these to kind of gain an advantage throughout the game. Then you'll move on to the action phase of the game. In this phase, you're simply going to choose a card from your hand and place it down on the field. That card is going to represent the character that you're going to be activating this turn, as well as whatever uh, cubes are on this card you are going to gain into your supply. You'll take the cubes from this bag here and you'll place them down here. In which case you can use these cubes as actions during this action phase. Each of the cubes offers unique advantages that you can utilize. And uh, the main thing that you're going to be trying to do, of course, is moving collecting these gems here, attacking your opponents, and using your cubes as kind of reactions for defense and whatnot. And each of these have unique uh, bonuses that you can kind of use with. Well, I have to grab my list of things so that I can explain each and every single one of these actions to you though. Okay, so I've got it here. I've got my whole list of things. But yeah, I've Gunhild. This is the character I'm going to be activating this turn. Uh, and I've placed it down. I've gained my yellow and my white cube. And now I can do my actions. I have blue, yellow, and uh, white and green cubes. Uh, green is agility. And it's these guys here. And what I can do with agility is I can move, push, and throw. Moving is simply going from one node to another. And this will allow me to get around the game map. Remember though, you can never move onto a space that's already occupied. Um, in some instances you can, like traps and whatnot, but you will take damage. Then you have the ability to push, so you can push certain things across the map, whether you want to push a trap onto another player to make them take damage, or push a rune off of the board to go and put it on the destiny tracker. And then of course there's a, a, a throwing as well. You can, oh, sorry, you can throw these guys off of the board. You can also push other players into certain things. Yellow is the instinct. That's going to allow you to use, use a defense and response. Uh, it's also going to let you collect. Yellow and blue will let you collect yellow and blue gems, respectively, when next to them on the game board. Uh, defense and response, when you use them, are going to allow you to kind of defend against other players' attacks towards you, whereas the blue is what you're going to use to attack other players and also to trigger certain things uh, in the game to, ha to happen. Uh, whenever you attack another player, you'll be using a, a blue uh, cube here, and you're going to be assigning damage. And that character will have to remove these guys here, these little, these little defense tokens, or um, they're going to be, or and as well as like getting rid of cubes. Uh, in addition to that, though, 
if they don't have a way to defend themselves with either of these tokens and of course the reactions and whatnot, you'll be having to discard a card of that type from your hand or from the bottom of the deck. And if you ever run out of that card's type, that character's type, that character can get knocked out, thusly scoring victory points for the person who attacked and thusly knocked them out. But don't worry, knocked out characters will come back into play at the end of the round. Uh, it's just going to be a suffrage for you because your opponents are going to gain a lot of advantage. And then white is pretty cool too. White you can collect, switch, and destroy. Collecting will allow you as a white cube to collect any type of one of these shards on the field. It doesn't matter if it's blue or yellow. You can also switch your primary character and of course you can destroy your opponent's statues on the board. These things here. You can never destroy the main base but you can always destroy the up top, the, the higher ones as they go across. But yeah, you'll be using all of these cubes here as to do any of these actions. And the main ones are like moving, attacking, collecting, and then of course throwing and pushing, and then you're using them as a reactionary like defense or reaction type ability, trying to remove the defenses from your hero, your opponent's heroes, and trying to score victory points. And you'll get victory points mainly from collecting gems and knocking out slash damaging your opponents. And that's all you do with this whole step here. There's a lot that goes on in this action step. It's probably the most important step of the round. After your action step is the support step. That's where you're going to be taking the card that you played and putting it into your memory or your discard pile. This is going to allow you to gain additional cubes. So if you've spent cubes from your actions that are removed, you'll check to see the top right hand side of the card when it's placed in your discard pile. Otherwise it looks, yeah, it still looks like it's the top right hand side, I suppose. Uh, but it's going to be these extra cubes you can get and you'll commit them to memory. You'll be able to use these hopefully for your next phase. You'll place them down there in your pool and now they're saved for the first phase of the game or during your action phase. After that, the next step will start to resolve. This is going to be the destiny step, and that's going to involve these cards here, this deck of cards you made at the beginning of the game. You'll be drawing these guys here and revealing them and checking to see whether they're an action or a destiny card. If they're an action card, you're simply going to be discarding any of these runes that you're going to be getting from this board here, and you're going to be flipping these cards over um, and enacting whatever it says. There's two different triggers. Usually the top one is something that happens, and the bottom for these action cards is an achievement that you can get at the end of the game to score you additional victory points. And you'll be placing them on the board in each of these little areas on the side of the track. Uh, if they're a regular card here, one of these guys here, it will denote a location on the board and then in that location a node where you will be able to place one of these gems. So that's how gems are kind of going to kind of respawn in the game. And you'll be flipping these over depending on the number of, of what card you draw and how many of these little shards that you have and thusly filling this board out. And that's the way the game is going to end. When the board gets filled up based on the number of players, uh, then you'll make sure you get equal turns and that will conclude the game. You'll score pay points based on how many victory points you've gained from damaging uh, opponents' um, cards and putting them over here into this side here because you're going to be damaging cards and placing them over here and scoring victory points for every time you do or whenever a character gets knocked out by neutral damage. You'll score points whenever you take these little tokens and move them into the shard area and uh, you'll score points based on whenever you have one of these action cards like for instance resistance. At the end of the game each player gains a victory point for every eight cards in their action deck. So uh, that's pretty useful and knowing which ones are going to pop out to, to, before the game is over is going to benefit, benefit you like especially the early game because you can kind of set how you want to play out the game. And of course you gain points from stacking your buildings up. Building your buildings will give you bonuses as well as victory points. And that's pretty much how the destiny phase is going to work. Flipping over cards, scoring additional points, taking actions that happen, and placing out these little tokens on the board to regenerate them to allow you to gain more victory points. The next phase, Nemesis phase. This phase is going to only incorporate in the game when you are playing specific scenarios that require you to play them. Basically how they work though is the bad guys will get a turn, the AI will kind of get to function, move around the board, and attack you. These are all the Jotun characters. Regardless though, moving on to the next step, which is the end step. In the end step, you're going to be reviving any of your knocked out characters, bringing their cards back, giving other players points. If that happens, you're going to be drawing cards up to your remaining, or your, your three main cards into your hand. Uh, and basically just doing all the basic set of stuff so that the next player can take their turn and simply rinse and repeat all of these actions. Overall, this is basically a tactical area control combat game with unique twists to destiny and whatnot, but I think you pretty much get the idea. There's, of course, a bunch of extra cards that are going to be involved in the game that you can acquire, that you can utilize for additional victory points, and of course you're going to have character abilities and skills. 
Uh, but we'll just talk about a lot of this stuff in my review now. As you can tell, this is a pretty intense game. There's a lot going on. Each of the turn structures are pretty simple and pretty straightforward. And understanding what's coming up next and how you can utilize your characters and cards in hand is going to be of great benefit to you. Speaking of that, the different types of characters that you choose for your team is going to be important as well, which is why the drafting of characters slash bidding of them is actually a really cool implementation for this game. Uh, this is like a lot of tactic games I've played before. It meets the Crossmaster Arena style play with some other unique area control games, but it has its own twists as well. Utilizing your cards, playing them down, activating certain heroes, and then as they go away into memory, you're gaining additional cubes that you can utilize on your next phase of play, being able to build your buildings up, protecting your area, scoring in multiple different game, uh, in different game modes or different, different ways in the game, like collecting these shards, you'll be gaining equipment, there's equipment they're going to pop out that you can be utilizing and equipping to your characters that give you a strong power throughout the game. Having each of your characters have unique abilities and functions is also super cool as well. This is a lot of fun. This game has a lot going for it. The artwork in this game is excellent. It's really, really good. They, you could tell, spent a lot of time, love, care, and attention to this game when it came to details. And uh, there is no shortage on details for this game. Speaking of details, the miniatures are high quality, excellent. These remind me of a lot of the Simon type miniature quality. Uh, each of the characters looks different, and you can tell the difference between them based on their character art and these guys here pretty easily, actually. Uh, the buildings are high quality as well. This is a full prototype copy, as you can tell, and there's a whole lot more in the campaign. I'm doing this after the campaign, um, so I got to take a look at the campaign before I went into my review after playing the game. Uh, so I, I saw there's a whole lot of bonus content that you're going to be getting in this, which is really, really exciting, especially because I only had a limited supply of what I was going to get. Uh, what's also cool about this tool is it's cool too, is it's got tactics, uh, which explains all the different tactics in the game. All your icons are going to be on a card as well. They went full force when it came to explaining the different phases of the game. So you're going to have these player reference to indicate to you exactly how everything plays out. Tactics, actions, support, destiny, nemesis, end turn. And most of all this takes place with a little bit in the uh, tactics phase, but mainly in the actions phase. And being able to keep track of tactics is useful when you've got a card that explains how each of them works. So coordinating, fortify, charging, building, and equipping and storing items, etc, etc. If you like a tactics game, something that's high quality, and something that's kind of got that Ragnarok slash the Jotuns and the Viking warriors fighting against each other, then this is going to be a solid game for you to check out. The unique twists of playing cards and activating warriors and scoring points in many different ways is gonna be useful. Having events trigger that change the way and the flow of the game and how different things are going to affect what you choose to do based on what now is a requirement in order for you to score extra victory points. Going out of your way to choose, do you want to throw a trap at somebody? Or is it more important to gather one of these gems? Gems. Or perhaps you're trying to build to gather these extra bonus cards as well as bonus gems that you can acquire as you light your flame. Do you want to slow the players down and destroy their buildings? Utilizing your specific type of cards and how their actions work with the game. Uh, are you going to be satisfied climbing the ranks and scoring with these different objectives? Or do you want to go all out in combat? It's really all up to you. There's no specific great way to win. There's not always a best play. Sometimes there is. But for the most part, it's just choosing to do what you want to do and making the most of your cubes with your actions and choosing the right action cards to give you the best benefit that you can possibly gain from them. Overall, Runar is an exciting game. High quality, great quality miniatures, excellent artwork, the double layered boards, uh, the, uh, the really, really nice player boards and main game board that has just these glistening portions that they did not need to include. A lot of this stuff I saw and I was like, wow, this didn't need to be included, but it just makes the game so much nicer. And you can see that they put their time and effort into this game. The combat is in there, but it's not like aggressively combat oriented. You can do other things. Like, yes, you are going to be fighting every game, but you have options to change your play style, to be able to trap your opponents and do all this other stuff. And that just made me really excited. And, and it's not just like, I feel like I had to just punch people over and over and over again. And that, that kind of tactic game gets kind of old, whereas this one kind of gives you a bit more of a branching um, uh, arc to choose what you want to do. And because of that, this game is going to be getting my seal of approval. approval. Runar by Ludos Magnus is a really excellent little game. <laughs> little game, massive game. And if you're looking for one of these 
these tactic style games. This one here is a cool one, especially for this year. One of my favorites so far. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Runar. If you want to pick this game up, it's currently available as a late pledge, so you can get it before the late pledge manager ends with the link down below in the description. I'm a huge fan of miniatures, and this one has a boatload of them, so which is an extra bonus for me, which is what I really enjoy. <laughs> so I'll be definitely picking this one up. Uh, you can also go ahead and check out our other channels, uh, our other videos on this channel, like, comment, and subscribe. Hit that subscribe bell button notification if you think we've earned your subscription. If you've watched more than one of our videos, consider subscribing. It greatly helps us out. Every Wednesday and whatnot, we sell games. We do shows on there. It's at 6.30 p.m. on whatnot. Link down below. And of course, course on Sunday at 6 30 p.m. PST we do a live show on Twitch, Facebook, and YouTube. You can go ahead and choose where you want to see us play games just like this one. Okay guys that's pretty much all I got for you this time and as always I look forward to delving into Ragnarok and fighting the Jotun with you next time. <laughs>